and thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. I am again, thankfully, joined by my friend and president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Huff. Eileen, we would not have gone through these last few months gotten through without you. Thank you so much for being back again today. And I can honestly say that we are turning a corner mm -hmm. when it came to home confinement. We're allowed to get out now and more of our businesses are opening. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you're hearing from the local businesses around town. No, absolutely. Thank you so much as always, Maria, for having me. Um, you're so supportive of, of our businesses and our community and, and we just really appreciate that. Of course. It's obviously everyone is extremely happy as businesses are starting to reopen. Um, that is a good sign, that is a positive sign. Um, it has also been very challenging for our businesses. Um, sure. The amount of um, protocols and rules and regulations um, and check boxes and everything that they have to do to reopen and conflicting information from the county versus the state versus Cal OSHA. Um, there's just been so much for them to sort through um, rules and regulations with respect to um, recalling employees who've been on furlough, to the protective, you know, PPE for their employees, to making their customers safe and all that. So it has been challenging for them, but obviously they are rising to the occasion. Yeah. Um, our businesses are extremely committed, of course, to wanting to make sure that their employees are safe and that their customers are safe. That is their overriding concern. Um, and they are working very, very hard to make sure that they are doing absolutely everything that they need to do to make that happen and to um, let the community know, you know, that they're working hard and, and to make them feel comfortable in coming back. But it is, it is challenging for the businesses and it's costly for the businesses as well. It really is. And, you know, I think that you brought up a really good point too. This has been like a huge learning curve. Every day we're getting new information and the adjustments that people are having to make sometimes daily because mm -hmm. they've got to stay on protocol. And this has just been unprecedented. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, obviously that's one of the key roles that the chamber has played. Um, we yes. are in constant touch uh, with the county, with the Department of Public Health, with the state, as well as with you know the, the professional organizations, the National Restaurant Association, things like that. Right. And so when we know that something is gonna be opening, we personally reach out and let our members know about that, um, right. particularly the members that are in that sector. As soon as those health protocols from the county hit their website, you know, last week it was quarter to seven on Thursday night for the businesses that were allowed to open on Friday and we didn't get the health order um, from the county until quarter to seven at night. But as soon as we got it, we turned it right around and got it out to our businesses so that they would know what they need to do because they need to have that information from the county. So we've really worked very hard to make sure we're on top of that information and then to curate it and get the essential stuff, the essential information, the vital information to our businesses so they're hopefully not having to sort through everything. We're trying to do that for them as much as we can. Um, but it's been challenging for them. And as I said, it's costly to them as well. And proof positive that you don't sleep um, because you're constantly on it. <laughs> it doesn't matter what time of the day or night, Eileen, you are right there to help the businesses. Absolutely, we are. I mean, we are, we're an advocate for the business community and uh, we've been fighting to get them back open and we're gonna keep fighting side by side with them to help them reopen. Um, but I do wanna stress and I, I wanna thank the community as always for being supportive of our local businesses, um, you know, whether it was takeout or delivery, which they're still continuing to do, but for yeah. those of you who are comfortable and wanna go back and dine in the restaurant, Obviously, we're thrilled to have that as an option for people who want it. Um, it's there, but we really, I want to encourage our community to please continue to do that because yes. one of the things that we all need to be aware of is yes, the businesses are reopening, but they are reopening under reduced capacity. So mm -hmm. when you think about the economics of how do you keep a restaurant viable, how do you keep a retail store viable if you can only operate at 50% capacity, if you have yeah. to limit the number of people who can come in, if you have to cut the number of, of customers or clients that you could service at any one point in time, how do you, if, if you've got a business, you know, how do you operate on 50% or less of your revenue and how sustainable is that over a long time? So um, what we're seeing is very positive, but we have a long uphill battle ahead of us. The other thing that is, is, is 
hurting our businesses is the cost of reopening, whether it was installing plexiglass, putting tape on the floor, the signage, the, the mask, the hand sanitizer, the disinfectant. That is a, a not insignificant increase in the cost of doing business. Right. And businesses don't want to pass those costs along to their customers. They don't want to raise their prices. But it's something that, um, that um, businesses have to absorb. So again, I just want to point that out to the community and, and say that our businesses are operating under reduced capacity. They're operating under increased costs. And so, you know, it is extremely important that we continue to stick with our businesses and support them in any way that we can um, because it is still very much an uphill battle. It is, and Eileen, I think it's really important to remember for all of the people going into the businesses, especially now, that, you know, it's about trust. And yes. I may feel comfortable going back into a store, but maybe a friend of mine doesn't feel so comfortable. But once they know that I'm going back in, they think, yes. well, Maria's gone back in, so maybe it's okay to go back in. I just think it's a, it's the more people that do it, yes. then other mm -hmm. people think, okay, it must be okay to do it. Because I know people that are saying, I, I won't go back into a store. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. you know, it's just that easing back in for some people. So yeah. I think that's super important. Yeah, no, and that, that is a really good point, Maria. Um, I think as, um, you know, again, we realize that there are people with underlying health conditions or age sure. who don't want to go back. So the stores and the restaurants are going to continue to offer delivery and takeout right. and pick up. Right. And exactly. Yeah. But for those who are comfortable going back, um, as you do it, tell your friends, you know, say, hey, you know, I went into um, Good Stuff and it was an amazing experience. They, you know, they worked really, really hard. Um, and uh, certainly if you have any questions about how the business is operating before you go, give them a call. You know, yeah. call up Avenue Italy and say, what are you doing? How are you protecting me? You know, because again, I know our local business owners and our managers and they love this community. They're a part of it. They want to, you know, they want to do things right. And so um, they're committed to doing things in the proper way. So if you have a question, call them. Um, if you have a question, call the chamber. We'll help you with that as well. Um, and then if you go and, and you have the good experience that I know you're going to have, tell your friends. Let them know that I went and it was awesome. Yeah. And Eileen, I am super excited about our show today because we are going to delve right into personal care businesses, yeah. which of course means you know, getting our hair done, going back to working out, things like that. And I know you've got two great guests lined up. I'm so excited. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back to meet them. All right, everyone, we are back. And our first guest today is Robin Felix, who is the owner of Felix Design Studio in the Promenade on the Peninsula. Robin, thank you so much for being with us today. We're so excited to hear that your business is open and you know, everybody really excited to get back in hair salons. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah, we are we we are ecstatic. I mean, it's it's a whole another way of operating the business, but um, just even walking back into my business is, you know, in all the years that I've been in this, it's, it's just, uh, it's my baby. So, you know, like, I like seeing family again. So um, yeah, we're, we're really happy to be back. I think we're, we're probably more excited than the clients who've been missing us. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know about that. Believe me, the one thing I hear from everybody is, please, when can I get my hair done? When can I get my hair done? So I think it makes people feel better to do the things like the hair, the nails, things like that. So I'm sure all of your clients are thrilled. Now you have been in business for 32 years. Congratulations on that. Thank that is, that's Thank amazing. You. And like you said, this is your baby. And I know you came up with some very creative ways through the home confinement to mm -hmm. connect with your clients. Talk about that. Well, you know, in the beginning, you know, like everyone, we, we didn't know what to do. We, we, you know, do we just stay home? Do we just, um, you know, call our clients and tell them to, you know, head to the market to Walgreens and buy a box of color or, you know, show them how to do a bang trim or whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, the Zoom thing came into play and then we were doing, um, you know, home deliveries of the product, if you know, with their color so that they can, you know, apply their color. And then we were doing Zoom meetings. Um, I, I would have a mannequin head next to me and they would actually, um, I would do an application of color and they would be able to follow me, you know, do, doing that at home. 
you know, or even a bang trim. So um, mm -hmm. we were able to kind of get a hands-on feel with, with them getting their hands into it. So they had fun with it. You know, I, I was nervous as all heck, but it, 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 it appeased <laughs> them, you know? Yeah. That was, you know what, that's one of the most creative things that I've heard. Well, how did you come up with that? Well, you know, we, in, in our industry, we're always on video watching each other. We're watching, learning haircuts, learning color, new techniques. And so we thought, well, why not share this with, with our guests? Why not bring them into our classroom? So we kind of made a classroom environment out of it. And I actually set up in my living room. My daughter came to visit and she was laughing. She's like, um, it looks like the salon's in your living room. And I go, it kind of is. But then I had this doll head that basically that I was working off of, you know, to, to, to do my demos on. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you reopened. What specifically did you have to do to get back sort of to normal um, when you reopened the salon? And I'm sure you did so much preparation. Tell us yeah, about that. We did a lot. And, and still to this day, it's, it's, not, it's just not normal. You know, we have uh, nine stations. I have nine staff members and I've got a, um, now somebody that does skincare as well and two front desk people. So at any given time on an, on the, on the, in the past, we would have up to, you know, 15 staff members and then that meant we would have a, an additional 10 guests in which gave us you know a good 25 people in in the space so now we've had to cut back on on mm -hmm. staffing um the amount of people who can work on any given day so we're trying to keep you know i've cut the chairs in half so now we're like doing three three um clients uh, at a time you know with three of us working one front desk person mm -hmm. um so that is it's still very hard to get used to because i'm mm -hmm. typically one to work with an assistant and i i typically wow. get in anywhere between five and ten clients personally a day and i'm only able to do maybe four to five clients in an, in an eight-hour shift to make sure that we have enough time in between each guest that we can make sure that we're sanitizing and, and making sure that we're ready for the next guest before they walk in the door. Mm -hmm. So the timing of it is just completely thrown off. So we're kind of going slow into it, um, but you know, just the fact that we have our hands in our client's hair and they're sitting in our chair is, is really amazing. What, what do you think for the clients was their biggest concern? Well, you know, we, we were able to put together a, um, kind of a form letter that we would email to to our clients before to our guests before they came in to make sure they understood the protocol before they arrived. We have it now divided. I actually put up dividers in the studio so we're all distance six feet apart and then every station has its own cubicle. Mm -hmm. So the client actually feels that they're extra safe. It's it's kind of sad because you don't get to really look and see everyone anymore because you're in your, your own little cubicle. But there's that sense of safety um, in the salon. We're no longer doing blow dries. Um, we're not allowed to do blow dries in the salon because of airborne. Um, mm -hmm. Once you blow dry in the salon, that creates a stirring of the air, which then can cause the, the virus to maybe spread from one, you know, from one person to another. So we're actually taking advantage of our, our little walkway out in front of the salon, and it's beautiful here at the promenade. We have a little rose garden that we're actually doing blow dries outside. So the clients are having their hair done al fresco. So it's actually kind of fun <laughs> going outside, you know, and having their hair blown dry. Kind of fun. You, that is one of the most, again, creative yeah. things that I have ever heard. You must be thinking 24-7 about all of this. Well, you know, it's, it's about the experience, uh, Maria. You know, when a client comes to visit Felix Design Studio, it's all about, it's not just coming to get your hair cut or not coming to get your, 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 you know, your skin care. It's, it's about really escaping into the environment that I've created and my team and I have created. And to feel like you've escaped and to feel like, um, wow, I can't wait to come back and sit in this chair again, you know? And so mm -hmm. we, we are trying to carry on that same tradition. And unfortunately we can't serve champagne. We can't serve beverages. We can't serve coffee. There's no eating. Um, mm -hmm. Clients can't even bring their own beverages, you know? So we're asking clients to, to really follow the PPE and, and, and the mm -hmm. protocol so that we, we do stay safe for mm -hmm. all of our guests and, and, our, and our team as well. All right, we are back and we are now joined by Corey Matthews. Corey, thank you so much for being with us. You are a personal trainer. You work in fitness. Um, I know that you work in health and nutrition. So we want to kind of pick your brain since COVID-19. A lot of things have changed. And I know that people are sort of getting back to whatever the normal is these days. So we have lots of questions we want to ask you, but tell us a little bit about your background. So I have been in the health and fitness industry for about 20 years. So I jumped right in out of college and I had a love of understanding how the body works. And I remember when I went to college, I was getting my degree in biology and I said, but where's the anatomy and where's the physiology? And they said, oh, you, you need to do kinesiology. And so I moved over there. And just since then, I've always had a fascination with how the body works, how it moves and just how understanding the body, how you can stay healthy, how you can prevent disease, 
And so I've just been so passionate about helping. It seems that when you help people get healthier, they can realize their true potential and their own goals. Very true. Very true. Now, I know that you work out with people sometimes in their homes. Um, and I think right now, a lot of people I know have said, I just want to get back to the gym. You know, of course, gyms have been closed. What do you see that is going to be different or is different now when it comes to, for instance, you working with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, is it wearing a mask? What is different? What's changed? Well, I think the key is, I think, first of all, people have realized that, you know, you can work out from home. I think everybody thought that they could do it at a gym. And I think for some of the individuals that I work with, the freedom to work out from home in a very, very busy schedule has been liberating for them because they can do that workout at home. Mm. But the key is, you know, going back, I mean, at the gym, you think about a mask and it's just, it's hard to interact with a mask. People are worried about the mask. Um, most of the stuff that I've seen with the gyms opening up with the masks is that you will be wearing the mask into the gym. But once you are inside the gym, you won't have to wear that mask to work out in. I know a lot of um, my clients were worried about that. They said, you know, sometimes I can barely breathe in this mask. I don't know how I'm going to work out in it. Um, but it's, it's going to be definitely, it's more, I think it's understanding the body. And I think that's what is great about my experience with the body is understanding it. Because in the hands-on field of like personal training, sometimes you'll put your hand on somebody and tell them, I want you to feel this muscle here. Mm -hmm. That's not something that we're going to be doing anymore. We're going to be standing at a distance. Um, we're going to be coaching clients. So it's really understanding how do you coach someone? How do you talk them through it? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and some people are ready to jump back into the gym and they want to go. And there's others that are still a little frightened of it. And they're a little afraid of going to the gym. And, you know, what is going to be, what is it going to look like? Is it going to be disinfected? Is it going to be clean enough? Do they have to worry about the gym equipment? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I've tried to work with people with their fitness and anywhere you need to be, whether it's guiding them in the fitness facility or whether it's, you know, you've got a piece of carpet and you've got some dumbbells at your home. Okay, great. Let's keep you fit. And so Corey, it just sounds like, you know, you were talking about putting your hand on somebody and instead now you'll have to be sort of re-educating them a little bit differently um, to get the same point across. Yes. So it's a matter of explaining the muscles. How do they work? How are you going to feel something as opposed to putting my hands on the back of their shoulder blades and saying, these are the muscles that are working. It's a matter of me demonstrating or showing them. So you're going to pull down and it's this muscle right here that you're going to feel. So it's just a different way of explaining it, but any good fitness professional should be able to do that. It's something that we're taught when we go through school is to have different different types of learning styles. How do people know? Do they see it? Do they feel it? And so it's really working with that client to make sure that they understand it. I, something else interesting that Eileen and I were talking about is, is you've done some virtual teaching um, during the COVID. Talk about that. So it's really just like, you know, you meet anyone on Zoom. So it's really walking through exercises. People don't know. And so it will be a client reaching out and saying, I design programs for them to do. So they can do it at five in the morning. Wow. Um, so that maybe it isn't, our schedules don't link up. So we can't be face to face, but it's, you know, they're asking me, what is a pistol squat? And so it's literally <laughs> getting on the floor and showing them, okay, you're going to take the dumbbell, you're going to hold it like this, and this is how you're going to do it. And they can face forward, they can turn sideways, and really just, again, it's coaching them through it, it's cueing mm -hmm. them how to do it properly. Um, but it, it's worked out really, really well. And, you know, some of my clients that their schedules, maybe we didn't meet up before because of distance or driving. Now that we're meeting on Zoom, it's been a little bit easier to connect with them and give them the appointments that they need. Yeah. I think that's really fascinating. And it, and it kind of ties in, Corey, with something you said earlier about some people have discovered the freedom um, and the flexibility of being able to work out at home. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can now coach them through that, um, you know, virtually, I think would be a huge, um, just it opens up a lot of opportunities for, for people to be able to work out and to be able to work with, with someone like you who can work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, and the key has been too, I mean, right when, you know, COVID hit, mm -hmm. it's just like a mass run on all of the exercise equipment for at home. Yeah, so yeah. it's even been, you know, how do you use a basic chair? How do you bring out gallon, milk gallon jugs? How do you use, you know, like a lawn garden steak? So it's just mm -hmm. getting creative, yeah. but I think we've never seen it as it's only been inside a gym, but when you look at it as to how much we can do at home, Mm -hmm. It's teaching people new skills and doing stuff differently. And, you know, it's so many of my clients initially reached out and they said, 
oh my gosh, I'm going to get fat because I can't <laughs> be in the gym and I can't work out. And I said, time out, we can figure this out yeah. and you know, we're going to make it work. And I know for me, it's my happy place is being at the gym. It's working with clients. It's talking to people about fitness. And mm -hmm. so it's finding other avenues that we could do this with people and keep them in shape, keep them healthy. Cause mm -hmm. you know, there's so many studies that have shown if they stay healthy and happy, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to survive this better. Okay, now you sort of just walked into my next question that we were talking <laughs> about earlier is through this whole COVID, are, have people gained weight or lost weight staying at home? I would say the majority of clients have gained weight. Um, yeah. And I think it's just because, you know, you're, you're stuck at home and so many and the people- the refrigerator is way too close. Right. Well, and it's one of those things normally in your busy life, you know, when you're not stuck at home, you're not walking into the kitchen, you're no. not going and just opening up the kitchen going, you know, I told a couple of people, you know, put a sign on the refrigerator <laughs> that says, is it breakfast, lunch or dinner? No. So that they wouldn't keep walking to the refrigerator. And I told them when you go to the grocery store, make sure you stock your, your refrigerator and your pantry with really good foods. Um, mm -hmm. We also did with some of the clients, it was a perfect time that we did a pantry purge and so uh -oh. get rid of all the junk in your pantry get rid of it because it's really hard right now if it's not easily accessible you right. won't eat it mm -hmm. well, that's a very good point and i know you work with um, a lot of clients on nutrition as well and also stress what's the biggest way to relieve stress during this very stressful time well, the biggest thing i told everybody is get outside get yeah. outside mm -hmm. and move because if you're sitting inside the entire time um, you're not getting any vitamin D from the sunshine. You're not getting any exercise. And so it's really just a key is find a way to move, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially with kids that were doing distance school and they were on screens all the time is just get out and move. I have never ridden my bicycle in <laughs> as much as I have over the last few months. And it's just because mm -hmm. I needed a form of getting out, walk the mm -hmm. dog. Right. And that, that makes such a difference in just your state of depression or feeling like hopeless if you get outside mm -hmm. and you know even walking down the street and saying hi to a neighbor if you're across the street but just waving at them you mm -hmm. see other humans not on a screen very true and, and i know at least for myself exercise mm -hmm. alleviates so much stress and you can kind of get in that rut of i'll do mm -hmm. it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow and then before you know you know it's been a month or a week whatever and when you jump back into it, I know during this time, it was, I, I could visibly see the difference mentally in mm -hmm. how I felt just making sure to have a little bit of time to do that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, you know, jump back in slow and don't beat yourself up. You know, right. people would say, well, I haven't worked out in three weeks. I'm like, that's okay. Yeah. You just, just go tomorrow. Just get going tomorrow, pick up a weight. Yep. And even it's a matter of a five minute walk. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes of a bike ride. It's just mm -hmm. a little bit of movement. And then if you add a little bit more movement the next day and a little bit more movement the next day, before mm -hmm. long, the muscles have memory. They're going to remember where you are and mm -hmm. it's going to all come back. Mm -hmm. And as far as gyms go, Corey, what do you think people's biggest fears are going back into a gym? I think it's, I think it's twofold. I think it's, there's the aspect of the people that have been going to the gym for years, they're really afraid that it's going to be so different that it won't be like it used to be. And they won't get as good a workout as they used to get because now there's the distancing, um, they're separating machines, certain parts of the gym are off limits. So I think they're nervous about not getting as good of a workout as they got before. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I believe there's also that fear. Some people fear the aspect of safety and is the gym really going to be clean? And um, I know from our local gym, everything that they've sent out with the, you know, how they're cleaning the gym, the sanitizing wipes that they're providing, you mm -hmm. know, the separation of the machines. I think generally, you know, you're not, there's not much there to worry about. And I think the people that are going to be jumping at the gym, they're already really healthy and they're really fit and they're taking care. And there's enough stuff out there saying that the healthier you are, your better right. chances are of surviving during everything going on. Yeah. Very good point. Corey, what do you see going forward? Um, you know, as, as things start to reopen, will people be more, um, you know, being able to devote more time and energy to health and wellness? Will the situation we've just been through make people more aware of the importance of, of maintaining health and wellness? I mean, what, what do you see in the next six months to a year for your industry? 
I think it'll definitely be an awareness of it to making mm -hmm. sure that they're staying healthier. I mean, anytime something happens where there's a pandemic or people get really sick, everyone mm -hmm. starts to question their own health and yeah. where are they at? And if I was healthier, would I fight this differently? Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to see the health and wellness industry is going to be busy coming out of this. Mm -hmm. um, for yeah. most of the health and wellness professionals, we've missed our busiest time of the year. So for right. businesses, this has really hit us hard because our busiest time of the year is January through May. It's post New Year's resolution. And so oh. it, it is hard. So now people are going to be catching up to that mm -hmm. and, you know, getting back into it. And I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of the fitness competitions or fitness events being pushed well into December. So it should be, it'll be interesting for the holidays. I think people are going to stay a little bit healthier through the holidays this year. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about people kind of starting slowly, not beating themselves up. I was going to ask you the best advice that you would give people about really getting back into to fitness and nutrition? I think the biggest thing is, you know, first and foremost, I always tell clients, make sure you're drinking your water. That's key because mm -hmm. water makes everything feel better. Yeah. Um, it's turn in terms of, you know, you need cardiovascular and you need strength training. Um, but for some people that's too much. So getting out and walking, the great thing is, is it's California. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, know, you just need a good pair of walking shoes and you can get outside and you can walk. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of nutrition, it's really looking at, you know, look at your processed food. How much processed food are you eating? How much sugar are you eating? Um, I always tell people, look at the amount of caffeine you're drinking too, because caffeine is our way of, you know, just keeping the body going when maybe we're a little too tired. Um, right. So there's definitely some simple key changes. And I always mm -hmm. tell people, start with one habit and then from there, let's do two. And then from there, let's do three, as opposed to, so many times people will come to me with nutrition and it's like, don't take this away and don't take this away. And I'll tell them if I work with them for 12 weeks, how we start today and what we look like in 12 weeks will be drastically different, but we're going to take it step by step and we're going to remove little bits of things mm -hmm. so that, you know, we won't be a drastic change. So when I tell them you're going to have your coffee or I've even told, you know, a lot of the moms that I work with, we're still going to let you have your glass of wine or we're still going to let you have your chocolate, but mm -hmm. we're going to balance the rest of the stuff to make it work for your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people think it's sort of like the all or nothing round. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's really balanced. I mean, I think what you just said, Corey, is just good advice in general. Just, you know, take it one step at a time and, and keep it in balance and in perspective. That's just good general life advice, don't you think? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Very much. I love the creating positive habits. We, we always think of habits as bad, but I think there are good habits as well. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. it makes it so much easier. If it's something that you do that you can look forward to, then it makes it it's doable. The all or nothing, mainly I would say all or nothing is most of the fad diets that you right. see out there. And those are the ones, you know, clients will come and they'll say, well, on this diet, I lost 10 pounds and I did it in two weeks. And then I ask them, I said, well, two weeks later, where were you? Or, exactly. well, why are you talking to me now? Because it didn't work. So I always tell people slow and steady wins the race with fitness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, every single day in terms of weight loss, if you lose one pound every single week, but you don't, that weight doesn't come back on you are being successful and you have a better chance of keeping that weight off mm -hmm. than of it rebounding later. Mm -hmm. well, you definitely have to be a huge motivator because people, they really need that so they can feel like they're going to succeed, especially when it comes to working out, I think. Yeah, that's, and it's, it just depends. There's so many people that do different things. They either need you to literally call them and say, okay, get out of bed and get here and come meet me and let's work out. Right. Or there are the people that, you know, they're, they're self-motivated and they just need the direction or the plan to do. But it's really, I always say my job of being a trainer and nutritionist is as much as a life coach too, because it's sure. really finding out, yeah. you know, I'm always asking what's your why, why do we want to do this? And if you keep that in focus, mm -hmm. then giving up the extra bar of chocolate or doing the extra 10 minutes of walking, it's okay because you know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Corey. Mm -hmm. and Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And Eileen, you and I will be right back in two and two. Don't go away. And that will do it for today's show. But before we go, Eileen, I just have to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We certainly could not do this without you. You get us great guests. You're so supportive of the business community. And uh, we just love having you right here on the show. And I think we're getting out so much good information really to all of the residents. So thank you again for all your hard work. Well, thank you, Maria, for the opportunity. And again, thank you to our residents um, and the community for supporting our local businesses.
Shop local, that's our motto. Okay, and thank all of you for watching. I'm Maria Soreau for Eileen Hub, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.